Kai Kunkel, and I feel glad to get to talk to you about puberty. Puberty is the time when kids start becoming adults, and it happens to people who identify as boys, girls, neither, both, or transgender. This video is for all people. During puberty, people experience three kinds of changes. Changes that happen to our bodies, those are physical changes. Changes that happen in our relationships, like with friends and family, those are social changes. And changes that affect our feelings, those are emotional changes. The word puberty is also kind of funny, and I've noticed that it makes some kids laugh. I've also noticed it makes some kids feel embarrassed, and other kids seem to feel excited to talk about puberty. Those feelings and all the feelings you have about puberty are normal. One reason people often have big feelings about puberty is that we don't have practice talking about it. I don't know how it is for you, but I talk with my 12-year-old about brushing her teeth way more than I talk about puberty. One thing is for sure, the more practice we have talking about puberty, the easier it gets and the more comfortable we feel. I invite you to notice how you feel right now. You can even take a deep breath and notice how your body feels. Notice the thoughts in your head and your emotions. See if you can name one word to describe how you feel. Whatever you're feeling, it's okay. I invite you to notice if these feelings shift as we talk about puberty. We'll come back to that idea later, but for now, let's talk more about the physical, social, and emotional changes of puberty. I'm going to answer the most common questions about puberty. When do people experience puberty? Why does puberty happen? What are the physical, social, and emotional changes? And where can I get answers to my other questions? Puberty usually happens between the ages of 8 and 16. Each person's body is set up to experience puberty at exactly the right time and in the right order for them. Your fantastic body knows how to go through puberty in just the perfect way for you. Puberty starts because of hormones. Hormones are chemical signals that travel through your body. You've had hormones all along. They regulate things like breathing and sleep and metabolism. Puberty starts because a small gland in your brain called the pituitary gland releases new hormones. These new hormones send the message to your body that it's time to change that kid-shaped body into an adult-shaped body. These changes take different amounts of time for everyone, and people's bodies will look different during and after puberty. One of the first physical changes people notice is a growth spurt. People grow taller, and sometimes a person's height changes pretty quickly during puberty. A person's sweat changes during puberty, too. It starts to have a different smell, and sometimes we call that smell body odor. Their hair and skin can become more oily than before, and some people get pimples. That's also called acne. Some of us get a lot. Some get almost none, but most people have some acne during puberty. Not only does the hair on our head change, but people get more hair on their bodies during puberty. Hair they've always had grows a little bit thicker, like hair on their face and torso and arms and legs. But they also start to get hair under their arms and around their private parts, and that's called pubic hair. People's body shape changes, too. It goes from being straight like a kid to having wider shoulders or hips, more like an adult. Our voices get deeper, and some kids' voices get much deeper, and when that happens quickly, their voices might crack or make squeaking sounds sometimes when they talk. There are a few changes determined by a person's reproductive system. The reproductive system is like any other body system, such as the muscular system, the respiratory system, or the digestive system. This is a diagram of the reproductive system of a person who was assigned female at birth. Here we see what's on the inside. It has two structures called ovaries. These ovaries hold cells called eggs. The tubes are called fallopian tubes, and the structure in the center is called the uterus. It's connected to the vagina. The vagina is one of three openings in the body. 
The other two are the urethra, the opening where urine, or pee, comes out, and the anus, where poop leaves the body. The structure above the urethra is called the clitoris. It's not an opening, it's an area that's sensitive to touch. During and after puberty, this structure sometimes fills with blood and becomes a little bigger if the person is feeling aroused or excited in a romantic way. This is sometimes called an erection. The ovaries do two new things during puberty. They send hormones that cause breasts to develop, and they start to release eggs. When an egg is released, it's called ovulation. The egg travels through the fallopian tube, through the uterus, through the vagina, and out the body. The person almost never notices ovulation. What the person notices is called menstruation, or getting your period. That's when some blood coming from the uterus leaves the body through the vagina. A period lasts about four to six days and nights and happens about once a month. Some people notice a small amount of blood, some people notice a little bit more, especially during the middle day or two of a period. There's a few ways to protect clothing when having a period, and the most common is a pad. Pads stick inside underwear and can be used for a few hours and then thrown away. Tampons are inserted inside the vagina and like pads are removed and thrown away after a few hours. There are reusable products too, like reusable pads and underwear that absorb menstrual fluid and can be washed and used again and again. There are even cups that can be used inside the vagina and washed and reused. Menstrual fluid is reddish or brownish in color, but clear or whitish fluid might leave the vagina other days of the month. This fluid is called discharge, and it's perfectly normal. It keeps the vagina healthy and clean. Remember that bodies can look all kinds of ways. It's healthy and normal for a person's body to look different than the drawings in this video. This diagram is of the reproductive system of a person who was assigned male at birth. Some of the parts are on the inside, and some can be seen on the outside. These two structures are called testicles. They're inside a sac called the scrotum. The tubes connected to the testicles are called the vas deferens, and the structure, this structure is called the prostate gland. The urethra is the tube inside the penis, which connects the bladder to an opening where urine or pee comes out. The urethra is one of two openings in this body. The other is the anus, where poop leaves the body. There are two ways a penis can look. In the second picture, the penis has been circumcised, and that means that a bit of skin called foreskin has been removed. Both circumcised and uncircumcised penises are healthy and normal. The penis can fill with blood and become bigger. This is called an erection. Erections happen throughout a person's life, but during and after puberty, they can happen if the person is feeling aroused or excited in a romantic way. The penis is sensitive to touch. During puberty, the testicles get bigger and start to produce cells called sperm. Sometimes the sperm travels through these tubes called the vas deferens, where they mix with fluid created by the prostate gland. The sperm, mixed with other fluids, is called semen. The semen travels through the urethra and out the body all at once, and that's called ejaculation. Ejaculations can happen while a person is sleeping. That's called a wet dream. They don't happen out of the blue during the day. Remember that bodies can look all kinds of ways, and it's healthy and normal for a person's body to look different than the drawings in this video. Next, we'll talk about the social and emotional changes. These are changes with our feelings and with our family and our friends. Before we do, let's pause to notice how we feel. You can even take a deep breath and notice how your body feels. Notice the thoughts in your head and your emotions. See if you can come up with one word to describe how you're feeling. And whatever your feeling word is, it's okay. Social and emotional changes are caused by another growth spurt. This one happens in your brain. The brain matter of a person in puberty rapidly increases, making it possible to think through complex ideas and make decisions more like an adult's brain can. But this brain growth won't be complete until around the age of 24. 
while the cortex, the front part of the brain that's responsible for reasoning, is still developing, it's the limbic system, the ruler of emotions, that takes the lead during puberty and adolescence. The limbic system and a whole lot more hormones cause people in puberty to experience big feelings, both unpleasant feelings like fear and rage and pleasant feelings like joy and confidence. People may also have crushes or romantic feelings about other people. After a while, the cortex helps the limbic system understand big, big feelings, but until then, you can help your brain manage those emotions in simple ways, like pausing to take a deep breath when big feelings flood your body and mind. By naming those feelings and considering why you might be experiencing them, and thinking through how you want to express those feelings to others. Because the limbic system, the emotion center of the brain, is powerful during this time, young people sometimes take risks or have a hard time controlling their impulses. Risks can be dangerous, but some risks are great ways to try something new, like auditioning for a play or trying out for a team. During puberty and adolescence, peers, people your own age, start to become more important than ever. This is a social change that helps us learn to communicate and solve problems and show empathy. Sometimes we worry about what our peers think of us, and this is the brain's fault too. It just happens to just about everybody, and so remember that feeling self-conscious is normal and having self-awareness of your feelings without judging yourself can help you develop confidence and kindness. Once again, I invite you to notice how you feel and to take a deep breath. Some people might have many more questions and that's normal too. You have a right to information about your body. I invite you to think about one trusted adult in your life that you can talk to. That adult can give you lots more information and they can share their beliefs too. They can also help you find safe sources of information. Remember that it's okay to feel shy or enthusiastic. It's okay to have any feeling at all when talking about puberty. Conversations about puberty get easier with practice. Puberty brings big changes to your beautiful body, your amazing brain, your valuable feelings, and the important relationships in your life. My wish for you is that puberty is a chance to learn about yourself and celebrate the fantastic person you are.